Let's give God some praise this morning. What is good to be in the house of the Lord once again. Lord, we might come to the family that we come to praise you. We come to give you honor and praise for all that you have done for us this week and the week that have passed. Will you please stand and join in us with our open hymn, Standing on the Promise of the Lord. Shall prophesy. 
son. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Mm -hmm. The sun shall be turned unto darkness and the moon unto blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever, whosoever shall call, shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be delivered. You hear that? Amen. Shall be delivered for in Mount Zion and Jerusalem shall be delivered. As the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. These are the words of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 Good morning, church family. For those who are there virtually serving with us in here, please stand for the reading of the gospel of the New Testament epistles, which comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 14 through 24. And it reads, But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoking mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of powers and wonders and signs that God did through him among you as you yourself know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plans and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God, but God, but God raised him up, having released him from the agony of death because it was impossible for him to be held in his power. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Prayer time. 
And as we prepare to come to the altar, remaining our seat, looking back over our life and realize that God is still sitting on the throne. And he is still looking down upon us. And he is still keeping his promise. But well, he promises never to leave us, nor to forsake us. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. What a friend I have in Jesus. All my sin and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. But to ask the question, must Jesus bear the cross alone? And all the world go free. None does a cross for everyone, and there's a cross for me. Almighty and all wise and everlasting God, that once again you have kept your promise to us. For starting at Monday morning, you woke us up on due time. Still close in our right mind, and still had a post of our help and strength. And you seem fit to let us get in our automobile and travel up and down the Lancia Highway. Whether we were going to the mall, to the grocery store, or whether we were going to our job or going to visit someone, you kept us safe all day long. And after keeping us safe all day long, money, returning home, as we return home, we find that everything was still like we left. We still had a roof over our head. Still had food in our refrigerator. Still had water to drink. And Heavenly Father, we still had clothes in the closet to put on our back. Only to lay down that Monday night and go to sleep. We don't know exactly what time we went to sleep, but you do. Then early Tuesday morning, you woke us up again and headed through another day. Tuesday will look different from Monday because we seen some things that we did not see Monday. We heard some things on the news that we did not hear Monday. And we realized that there was still killing and robbing. There was still sin and evil in this land. But you say love that neighbor as yourself. We have fallen short of doing all of that. Sometimes we can't stand our neighbor. Sometimes we do not even have to speak to our neighbor. But you find in your heart to speak to us every morning, every day. And you find it in your heart to say good night to us every night. Heavenly Father, sometimes we pass people that is on the street that need help. And we pass them by. Not stopping and not helping all right? Now even I ask them, do you need help? Look at, look at the homeless. They're still sleeping up under the bridge. Still sleeping in tent. While we enjoy the comfort of our home. Whether it be a small home, a meter side home, or a mansion, or a apartment. We still have a home to sleep in. In heaven, Father, you say, forgive them that trespass against you. We have a habit to hold in long grudges and not to be able to give, forgive. So, Father, heaven, Father, I ask that give us our trespasses as we forgive those who sin and trespass against us. Leave us an honor to, to temptation, but deliver us from all things that are sin and evil. For thou the king and the power and the glory that we all must call on. So Heavenly Father, we come this morning in this worship service. Asking you to forgive us for our sin. Forgive us for our, our shortcoming. Forgive us for not taking care of the one that needs to be taken care of. Forgive us for not loving our neighbor and our enemies. Heavenly Father, when 
all him booking by with them big clothes down here on this earth. When we do praying a little over here and a little over yonder, I ask that you take us and place us somewhere in your piece of our kingdom. But we can praise your name more better than we now do. For this is our servant prayer. I ask my son of Jesus' name. Christ said, Amen. Amen. Amen.
taken today. He laid away. Laying in the bed on the hospital, laying in a hospital bed. Not sure that he might be able to walk again. But come on and give him a look at your man. May not be where you want to be, but thank God you're not where you used to be. May not have what you want to have, but thank God you have a little bit of help, a little bit of somebody come on and give him praise.
who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's bow our heads just for a moment. And now, O oh Lord, may the thoughts of our minds and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer, let the church say, Amen. 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 If I put a tag on this, I would simply call it fresh air for stale lives. <laughs> fresh air, stale lives. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, we cannot forget that scripture reveals that the intrepid band of followers of the way, the followers of Jesus, were still in hiding. They were still shut up in a musty, dusty, stale room, mm -hmm. hiding away from the public. Amen. They were cut off from the world. They were cut off from others who needed to hear what God had done. They were cut off from fellowship with like-minded believers. They were cut off from worship, cut off from faith, cut off from friendship. They were cut off from mutual forgiveness. They were holed up in their musty, dusty echo chambers, listening to each other whine and complain about each other and their predicament. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were in the upper room, divided, fractured, splintered, still not together. The Bible reveals that on the day of Pentecost, the disciples were, they were not a church. They were a group but merely a fearful ragtag group of the master's followers who were on the run from the law, desperately concealing their faith, hiding from their hiding for their lives and frozen in fear, gripped by despair, encumbered by doubt, splintered by division, weakened by disunity, and fractured by distrust. They were in danger. They had descended into fault-finding and sin-shaming each other. We, if we didn't know any better, we would think that the passage describes the church as it is right now. Amen. Amen. Minister Parker and Dr. Warren and Sister Norwood and Sister Wilson and myself, we just returned from the annual conference and no doubt the many will declare that the big story of the annual meeting of the North Georgia Conference in Athens was that two of our churches disaffiliated with another 180 contemplating disaffiliation with a vote coming in November. Many will declare that the big news is that, that two churches left and the biggest church in the denomination, which is a part of our Central North District, will vote on Wednesday night whether they will remain united or they will go away and be on their own. Many will declare that the big story of the annual conference is that the United Methodist Church is no longer united. Mm -hmm. If ever. Somebody say if ever. <laughs> if ever we really will. 
I do not believe in the irony of ironies that on this the second Sunday of Pentecost, we, we stand here uh, recognizing that for years now, the church, the body of Christ, has argued, have been splintered, have leveled accusations, protested, and wrestled for control, and engaged in fault-finding and name-calling over who God can and God cannot use. Amen. Amen. I hope you understand that really is all this is about. For to say some that want to leave, want to go back to the old position that women cannot preach in the pulpit. But I think I just read in God's word but God himself said, on that day I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your Yet here we are, 2,000 years later, almost 3,000 in a few hundred years, and we are still fighting over who God can and cannot call. Help me somebody. <laughs> and at this point in time, many have decided that they don't want to be a part of a church where women are in the pulpit. Some have decided, I do not want to be a part of a church where a lesbian or a homosexual might be in the pulpit. But do I need to read the scripture again? I think what, what Peter preaching on that they really said was, God is sovereign and he will call who he will call and he will use who he will use and he will not ask for your permission or my permission. If anybody knew that God would will do crazy things, it was Peter, Peter who denied him, Peter who rejected Jesus on that night, Peter who said, is hell in the Bible? <laughs> okay, so Peter said something about hell, and then he said, I don't know it. It's not me. That's why Jesus came back and met them at the shore yeah. after they had gone yeah. out fishing, after yeah. they had gone back to doing their yeah. worldly yeah. things, yeah. after they had neglected the mission of the church, yeah. Jesus met them by the sea. Ira, you remember when we dipped our toes in the waters there at the beach on the Sea of Galilee, Lois Burton. You remember? Jesus met them there and he said, well, hold up, Peter, do you love me? Yeah. You know I love you. Okay, well then do what I told you to do. But let me ask you again. Do you love me? <laughs> now Lord, you know I love you. Well then feed my yeah, 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 But let me yeah, ask you one more. But Peter, do you love me? Peter understood that if anybody could make it, it was Peter who pulled out a sword in the garden and cut off the servant's ear. Peter, who was a worldly man who would fight at the drop of a hat, if anybody knew that God could use anybody, it was Peter. Yeah, yeah. But just look at the disciples. Mm -hmm. Their Matthew was like an Uncle Tom. Amen. Somebody. <laughs> that term that we used to describe those who, uh, uh, we could say it this way, not everybody who is your skin folk is your kin folk. <laughs> and just because they have the same color doesn't mean that they have the same desire to do good for you. Amen. Amen. Yet, yet Jesus called the Matthew. If anybody, if anybody could be used, then we ask, well why in the world did he call Judas the one who would stab him in the back? The one who would turn him over? The one who would cause his life to, but yet God called him and here we are as a church today, and we want to fight over whether God can use somebody who is LGBTQIA, whatever others will come up. It does not matter. Amen. For 50 days, the disciples were fault finding with each other. They were name calling. Well, Peter, you deserve it. Mm -hmm. 
But Judas turned him in. He betrayed him. Thomas, you doubted when he came back. They sat around fault finding. Mm -hmm. And I wonder why is it that we still in this generation, in this day, still find ourselves fault finding? Well, I don't like that choir. They don't sing the music I like. God didn't ask you to like what they're, they're not singing to you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Well, we don't like that contemporary gospel. That's all right. If the message gets across to some contemporary folk, then let God be God and let God use who he will yeah. use and use what he will use. Just either, either help God out or move out of the way. But don't stand in his way. That's why the church is in trouble of breaking up today. Some people believe that God can only use a certain folk. Don't you know there once was a time when Richard Allen went to pray in that church there in Philadelphia, and when he came up to the altar and knelt down, they said, uh, Allen, you need to get up and leave, and he refused to get up off his knees, and some of his other brothers took him by the arms, dragged him to the front door, and tossed him out because he looked like us. Mm -hmm. There have always been people within the family of God that sometimes think that they have privilege, that think that because of who they are or what they have or what their position is, that they are better than other children that God has created. And yet, at the end of the day, we are all, as Bishop D said, broken vessels made of earth and clay. We're all just human beings. And none of us would be alive except for the breath of God going on the None of us would be saved if Jesus didn't die on the cross. None of us would, would, be, would, would, would have everlasting life if the Lord had not said, Father, forgive them, not just those who crucified him, but them, those who rejected him, them, those who loved him and yet walked away, them, those who reject all of us. He said, Father, forgive them. And yet today we have the timidity to think that we are the only ones good enough for God to use. That's why the church is in trouble. The only thing I say, the Holy Spirit came to build up the body of Christ. And on that 50th day after Jesus' resurrection, something strange happened. The Holy Spirit descended from heaven with the sound of a rushing mighty wind. Yes, yes. He came to remind us that the church is not about political power, but yes, about yes. spiritual power. All right, yes. all right he came to remind us that it does not matter who is Caesar or Pilate or the president. It does not matter whether you are liberal or conservative, middle of the road or to the left of the road. It does not matter where you live, who you know, what you have. The Holy Spirit came to remind us that the only thing that matters is that you must be born again. You must accept Jesus as your Savior. You must be saved because of the love of God. You must love God. You must love your neighbor and love yourself like you love your enemies. Love them all. The Holy Spirit came to remind us that there should be no injustice, no inequality, no hunger, no homelessness, no hatred, no racism, no sexism, no division, no war, no strife, and no sin. The Holy Spirit came to remind us that the only thing that, that matters is that God's power is stronger than man's power. Man's power harms, but God's power heals. Man's power divides, but God's power.
power unites. Man's power oppresses, but God's power liberates. Man's power blinds, but God's power gives sight. Man's power incarcerates, but God's power sets us free. Man's power kneels on necks, but God's power gives life. Man's power destroys, but God's power builds up. Man's power brings war, but God's power always seeks peace. God's power always seeks that we might be together in love with one another. That's why the great apostle Paul, preaching there in the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, says, Now faith, faith. hope, and love, these three abide, but don't get it wrong. Faith is strong. Without, with faith, you can move mountains. With faith, you can walk on water. With faith, the blinded eyes can be opened. Faith is strong. Hope is good. Hope gives us a reason to get up the next day. Hope gives us a reason to rise when we've been knocked down. Hope gives us a reason to go on when we don't feel like going on. But the greatest of these greatest of these is God's love. Amen. God's love. Amen. God's love will pick you up when you fall down. God's love will make a way when there is no way. God's love died on the cross that we might have a right to eternal life. Therefore, There is a word. There's a word for somebody today. We don't have to go on behaving like the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Black folk, black church, church, Christians, we don't have to fight over who God will use. We don't have to argue over what kind of music we should sing. Sing all of it. Yes. And if you don't like it, just sit there and, and, and encourage them to sing on anyway. Because one of these days you won't be here to hear anything anyway. You better enjoy what you can while you can. Don't be so bold as to think I don't want to hear that. God might say, all right, then I'll just take your little hearing. You don't have to hear it. Yes, sir. Come on, God. Don't mess with God. Did, 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 did not the play right right? Your arms are too short. Yes, yes. Don't get it twisted. We are not here today because God can't do whatever God wants to do. We are here today because God can. I wish I had a witness this morning. God can and God will. And yes, there is a word. We don't have to struggle over who God will choose and who we'll worship with. And when we'll work, just give yourself to Jesus. Just yeah. allow the Lord to use your life. And if we will allow God to use our lives, God will turn the world upside down as we go out. <laughs> On the day of Pentecost, God breathed new life into those disciples that were fractured and splintered. Peter was in the, in the room and, and, and he was there plotting and planning on how he could get rid of Peter and, and uh, James and John. And James and John were in the room sharpening their knives, trying to figure who they could take out so that they could be in charge. And, and Matthew was trying to look to see how he could gain advantage. And, and Thomas was still angry. Folk were calling him down in bitterness and, yeah. and they were all splintered. But when the Lord breathed his breath on yeah. them, yeah. when the Holy Spirit came yeah. among them, they quit fighting each other. Yeah. They quit fighting over yeah. what color the carpet would be and what instrument would be played. They quit fighting over who would be in charge and who God would use. They quit fighting over all of those things and they left their echo chambers listening to themselves whine and complain and went out into the streets. I tell you, when we get out of these four walls, then we become yeah. the church. Yeah. It's good to have worship, but the object of worship is to glorify God so that we can then go back into the world and God can use us to make ways out of no way, to break the bounds of sin, to
to set the captives free. God can use us to spread his gospel and his message to whosoever will. I declare we serve a God of the second chance. And don't think too highly of yourself. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, let us not think too highly of ourselves considering that thinking that we may be better than someone else. Remember when? Mm -hmm. Remember when you used to get high? Stay drunk all weekend? Remember when you would take your ring off before you went out on Friday night and it didn't get back on? Remember when you were chasing every pair of pants and every skirt that you thought you could catch up to? Remember when? Huh? Look back over your shoulder. Remember when you used to abuse your spouse and abuse your children and, and, and you, 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 you were cursing and using all kinds of foul language. Remember, remember, remember when folk used to call you the N word and, and, mm -hmm. and did everything but call you a child of God. Remember when some had white privilege and they violated the rights of people of color. Oh, don't think that we are better than anybody else. We are, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of God's glory. That's why his Holy Spirit came that day. I'm glad. I'm glad as the old church used to say, I'm, I'm not what I used to be. I may not be all God wants me to be, but I thank God that I'm not the way I used to be. All God says is, don't worry about what I command you to do. Just, just trust me and do it my way. Yeah. Trust my plan and, and allow me to work through the imperfections. Trust my word and allow it to take root in your heart. Trust my will and my will will go forth because my word never returns void. Jesus started out trying to build the kingdom with only 12 men and a couple of dozen women. And although, although, although many of them deserted him, we are here today because of them. Yes, yes. Jesus began by trying to build the kingdom of God with a few folk that couldn't get along together and were always questioning one another and always forming little cliques. Peter, James, and John had a little clique. And then Matthew, Luke, and Bartholomew had a little clique. What click are you in? <laughs> they had been laughed at, these men and women in the upper room that day. They had been laughed at. They had been ridiculed. They had been scorned and shamed. Their leader had been lynched. Their treasurer had committed suicide. The company of the twelve and the few dozen women had become the company of the confused. They were not together that day. They were not on, of one mind. They were not of one spirit. They were not together. They were not in the same place. I do not mean it to be redundant, but, but that is why we must pay attention to what Luke says here in the second chapter of Acts. For he says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, then they were together. Yes. They were all together in one place and on one accord. By process of logic then, what Luke is saying is that before the day of Pentecost, they were not together. 
They were not on one accord, nor were they in the same place and the same mind. For in other words, the church was not together. They were not in agreement on anything. They who were the water washed were not in sync with God. Since the day that Jesus was crucified, they could not get it together. Yes. Some said he lives. Mm -hmm. Some said he didn't die. Some said he was a ghost. And still others said he was still as real as anyone else. They couldn't get it together. Yet these same disciples had gathered together finally in the upper room and, and they were finally on one accord and in the midst of it all when they finally learned that God would use any of them the way God wanted to. When they finally accepted that God could use anybody that God wanted to use. When they finally accepted that the mission was not theirs but it was Christ's and that they and we had been called to do God's will. Then the Holy Spirit came. And on that day, when the wind began to blow suddenly in the room, there appeared on each one of them, the scripture says, tongues of fire, tongues of fire, warming them and, and melting their hearts. Tongues of fire, setting their souls on fire for the Lord. And they left the upper room. Maybe, maybe you don't feel like your story, maybe you feel like your story is over. Maybe you feel like you lived so long that there's nothing else left for you to do. Maybe you think that because someone says you can't, that maybe you shouldn't. But I'm here to tell you today, God is still blowing fresh wind, fresh air in the stale lives. And when we tell ourselves God can't, God is here to tell us, oh yes I can. When we tell ourselves it can't be, God is here to say, oh yes it can. When we say the doctor can't do it, God is here to say, oh yes Dr. Jesus can. When somebody says that the door can't be opened, God is here to say, oh yes it can. When somebody says that you can't make it when just a handful of folk that turn the world upside down, the Holy Spirit says, oh yes I can. Will you allow the Spirit to move on you today? Will you receive God's message and God's promise that if we allow him in, he'll turn the world upside down. Somebody give God glory. You may be in your upper room of sickness. You may be in your upper room of disappointment. You may be in an upper room of death and unemployment. We may be in an upper room of foreclosure or disillusionment or infidelity or opposition. But God came to tell us that we can trust God's plan and God will blow fresh air into our lives. Somebody say yes. We just have to trust God's plan. I don't know about you, but I'm going to trust him. I don't know what tomorrow will bring. I heard the songwriter say, and I do not know when the angels are going to sing. But there's one thing I know. Oh, yes. God cares. Yes. God cares for me. I may be up and I may be down. You may even feel like sometimes that we are level to the ground. Oh, yes. But that's all right. Hold on to his hand. Because I know that God cares. And this morning, he's breathing the fresh air of the Holy Spirit. Sending his power among us. That we can turn Clayton County, Jonesboro, Atlanta metropolitan area, Georgia, and the world upside down. If we'll just allow him to work through us and work on us. Somebody say, work on me, Jesus. Work on me, Jesus. Work on me till my hands look new. Work, work, work on us, Jesus. Work on us till we see 
new visions. Yeah. Work on us, Jesus, till our old men dream dreams and our young men see visions. Work on us and work in us, Jesus, till our sons and our daughters prophesy. Work on us, Jesus, until those that are sinful come crying, what must I do to be saved? Work in us and breathe fresh air into these stale lives. And we will be so careful as to give you the glory and the honor and the praise. Amen? Amen. 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 Do you all know that song we are standing on holy ground? If we could play a little bit of that. We're standing on holy ground. Yes, yes, yes. On this ground, anything is possible. In this upper room, the Spirit empowers us to go forth and turn the world upside down for Christ. In this upper room, the Spirit engages us to magnify Him and then to go forth not just to those that we feel comfortable with, but the Spirit gives us boldness. It was that boldness, it was that courage, it was that holy boldness that Peter had that led him and the others from their upper rooms out into the streets. And with boldness, Peter began to preach. And at the end of the day, over 3,000 had been saved. It was that boldness of the Holy Spirit that filled him, that led them from Jerusalem into all Judea. And everywhere they went, people were being saved and they were being welcomed into homes. It was that holy boldness, the boldness of the Holy Spirit that led them into transforming the world. If you are under the sound of my voice and you hear the Spirit speaking to you today, know that wherever you are, it's holy ground. And God wants, wants to change the world beginning with you. If you've not given your life to Christ, if you are uncertain that you have eternal and everlasting life, let me see if I can say that another way. If you are not sure that when you die, you will live again with God and live eternally with Jesus Christ, if you're uncertain of that, then I invite you to give your life to Christ right now. The Holy Spirit is moving. He is breathing. He is giving you life. Pray this prayer with me if you're ready to receive Christ. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, I confess that I tried to save myself and now I realize that no amount of good sins of the past forgive me now of every sin I've ever committed and restore to me the joy. Give me salvation. I accept you as Son of God died for my sins and risen to give me eternal life. Be the head of my life, Jesus. Lead me, guide me, and show me the way. Lord, I thank you for saving me even in this very moment. And now, Lord, put me to use in your kingdom. Unite me with a church, with a congregation, with people that want to be together and want to serve you, that want to be united in love of Christ and love of each other. And I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The doors of the church are open today. Won't you stand with me and let's just sing a verse of that. We are standing on the whole. Let us pray.
if there, if there is anyone here today that has not accepted Jesus as your Savior, I'd like you to give your life to Him right now. Step out and walk down this aisle. Give your life to Him. Let's say that one more time. We are standing. The doors are open. On holy ground. There are. Yes. 
merciful Father, merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your laws. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. While one might dare die for a loved one or a son or a daughter, not many might dare die for someone they did not know. But his love is proved to us in that just at the right time, he came and gave his life that we might be free from sin. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Won't you turn to someone and share briefly a sign of peace and love with them as we prepare to receive this? Join with me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father almighty creator of heaven and earth and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn holy 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 lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest Holy are you and blessed is your name, your Son, Jesus Christ. For by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. It was on that Thursday night as they gathered that he took bread, he blessed it and broke it, then he gave it to them saying, take and eat for this is my body which is broken for you, do this as often as ye shall in remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, he took the cup in his hands and he blessed it, holding it before them. Then he turned to them, saying, Take and drink, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this as often as ye shall in remembrance of me. And therefore, in remembrance of your mighty acts of salvation through Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as... a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ suffering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at 
that is heaven and that is Our honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, and now and forever. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who sinned us against us, and lead us aside from temptation, but deliver us from the evil, the dying of the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. celebrating our uh, graduate recognition Sunday. We invite you to come back and share with us. Uh, we want all of our graduates, and if there's a graduate in your family, in your home, that you want us to remember and want to celebrate, then make sure you bring them here, but also call us at the office so that we can have their name there and get a picture, and we'll have them in the program. But we're depending on you to help us do that. Next Sunday morning, 9.30, we'll be back to share. And there is a card that says, with special thanks to all of you. Uh, to know you is to know people who are kind and considerate, thoughtful and wonderful. To know you is to be grateful for the special things that you do. For everything you've done for being the special people that you are. Thank you so very much. We appreciate 
all of your support during this difficult time. And also we appreciate all your thoughts and prayers that have meant so much to us. Love from Daryl and Mildred Wheeler to the Andrews Chapel family and their family. God bless you. Church, this has been a wonderful day of worship. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, it's been a long week for me. And uh, I'm just glad to be home. Good to be home. Um, I need to ask, I need to invite uh, Sister Angela Wall to come up and make an announcement. I could do it, but I'm on her. I don't want to do it. Okay. <laughs> But I'm going to assume this is for a pastor <laughs> um, for, um, for Sunday. For Sunday, we will be um, celebrating pastor. Um, and uh, I'm new with this role, so I forget the exact term. So, Ira, help me out. Uh, pastor return, basically. Yeah, pastor return, right? Every year, right? <laughs> that we, that we have, of course, um, welcome the pastors back at this time. So, join us on yeah. for Sunday. Basically, he is coming back. That's what you're saying. Oh, yeah. Well, they do that, but no, no, thank you. But pastor is coming back, right? And so he will be our pastor. And we'll be celebrating that on this Sunday. Amen. 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 Thank you so very much. Uh, Bishop Dees and the cabinet, uh, and, and under their deliberation, they decided they would appoint me one more time. And um, I'm thankful to you, the people of God. I'm thankful for to you and for you because on the fourth Sunday this this month, uh, I will start my 42nd year under appointment uh, in the North Georgia Annual Conference. And uh, amen. Okay. Let us stand. It's been a great Sunday. I thank you. This choir has been wonderful. Have a Blessed by our choir, blessed by our musicians, blessed by this ministerial staff. Oh, we got to do the offering too. Uh, and here's what we're going to do. Thank you, my brother. Here's what we'll do. Uh, we invite you to give. You know that there are four ways that you can give, and I'll let him do it. The four ways uh, you can email it by email to 122 Wallace Street. Or uh, you can mail it to one on the two wall in the street. Or uh, you can call the office and stop by and make an appointment and drop it off. And you can give electronically. You can go to the web page and give. Remember also the repair a thon is still going on. And we are making repairs, doing wonderful things. But we need you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for the support of your church. Second Sunday we'll be back. Uh, so we'll do some more things then. And uh, third Sunday is Father's Day. Look forward to seeing you. We invite you to give as you would exit the sanctuary. The ushers will be there. But before we uh, before we dismiss, would you bless all? A great report. We come once again thanking you for thanking enough enough of us to give us another finance blessing. And because you thought enough of us to give us a finance blessing, we now offer a portion of that finance blessing back up to you so it may be used for what you have been set aside to be used for, for feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, buying medicine, and helping those who need help with the rent. Then you know the blessing we thank you in that time, Jason, I am proud to say amen. Amen, friends. Once again, thank you for being here this morning. Sister Allison has been working hard down front. I believe that the internet may have gone out with the system. So she's broadcasting directly from her iPhone here. Uh, that's the old fashioned way. But uh, we thank her for standing in and doing that in our communications and thank you. Amen. 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 Now to him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him who is able to present us on that great day with exceeding joy. To God who is our creator. To Jesus who is our savior. To the Holy Spirit who is our power. To our God be power, glory, honor, and dominion. Now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen.